In this video, we're going to do a derivation in sentential logic using all of the available rules. So that includes the 10 basic rules as well as our derived negation of rules. Uh, there's a lot of premises here. Looks a bit complicated, but it's not so bad. We always start off, as always, with our show line. Show P arrow bracket Q or not S. Now, I actually have two ways to proceed here. Because I have all my rules, I can always provide uh, sort of a entry to the question by using brute force, which means I can just assume ID and immediately begin from there. So that's what I'm going to do. Now here I get AID, but I have a negation of conditional, which I can immediately use the negation of conditional rule on, which says I can affirm the antecedent and deny the consequent. So that's two negation of conditional. Now immediately I can simplify this into two nice lines, P and not Q or not S, and that is line 3 simplify and line 3 simplify, and then I can see immediately that I can de Morgan's this. Why? It's the negation of an or, so I get neg negation Q and not not S, and that is five de Morgan's. Now I know I can simplify this, but I'm just going to sit on it for now. I'll simplify it later when I need to. <clears throat> so I haven't actually even looked at my premises. I just broke down the show line. Now just to sort of compare, what would happen if I actually did a standard breakdown? Because um, you might say, wait a minute, why didn't I do an assume CD? Well, it turns out it actually doesn't matter. If I had done this proof uh, using a mixture of sort of my old breakdowns, I would have gotten the exact same information. Here I would have assumed CD. Then here I would write show Q or not S, and then I would assume ID, my Q or not S, and that is uh, assume ID, and then I would de Morgan's this, and I get not Q and not not S, and that's four de Morgan's. Now notice it's the exact same. Over here I have my P, over here I have my not Q and not not S. Uh, it's the exact same as over here where I did it the brute force way. My personal preference is actually to do it this way, but I just sort of wanted to do this as a little exercise so you can see that when we have the derived rules, we can just go right at it and attack the proof. This may look like it has the advantage of being one line shorter, but we actually have one extra show box to close, so maybe they're basically the same. Anyway, I'm not too worried. I just wanted to show you two different ways to enter the uh, derivation. Okay, so now that we've got that, I just quickly look at my um, premises and start doing automatic moves. Well, this one is easy. This is a negation as the main connective, but it's the negation of a biconditional, so I use my negation of biconditional rule, and I get this. And that's premise one, negation of biconditional. Now, I know I can split this up, but again, I'm just going to sit on this. I'll, I'll split it up later when I actually need it. On line eight, uh, that's just an or. Well, do I quickly have the negation of one side? Doesn't look like it, so I move on. This is a conditional. Well, do I have the antecedent or the cons negation of the consequent? Doesn't look like it, and move on. Uh, over here, this is the negation of an and, which means I automatically use de Morgan's. So I get T or not not R. And that is premise uh, for de Morgan's. Now, that's actually sort of nice because um, that means this premise is taken care of and that premise is taken care of. I don't need to look anywhere. And I have this additional nice sort of line that I can use, T or not not R, uh, and that's sort of a modus to lend opponents waiting to happen. So I realize that I have to sort of somehow attack the uh, derivation here. And I don't really, it's not so clear where to start. In premise 2, it looks like I can try and do an MTP. So if I was to MTP this, I would need not T, or I would need not not W, which is of course equivalent to W. Over here, I can MP it, in which case I need the antecedent, or I can MT it, in which case I need the negation of the consequent. And again, another sort of entry level over here would be I could try and modus to lend opponents line 8. I could try and modus ponens or modus tollens something from line 7. So I have some options and I look around. Keep in mind that I know I have not Q as well as S as well as P. Well, I look around and maybe the first thing I should do is actually combine 6 and 7. So 6 and 7, I realize I have the not Q, and on line 8, I can get. Uh, the easy not Q arrow not Z, 
and that's from line 7 by conditional to conditional. Oops, sorry, that's not line 8. That is line 9 over here, and this is line 10. So now I can take the not Q from 6 and simplify it and modus ponens here to get the not Z. So that's 6 simplify 9 modus ponens. Now I have a not Z. What can I do with the not Z? Well, maybe I should build something. At this point, I'm just going to start building. So I'm going to sort of pick something randomly. It doesn't really matter. I can pick the negation of one of these sides. I can pick to build the antecedent. I can pick to build the negation of the consequent. I'm actually going to choose to build the antecedent here. Um, actually, just taking a quick look, it looks like it'll be very easy to do. So what I really want is I want the antecedent of premise 3. So I show it. Show t arrow s and not z. Now, a very nice thing to do here would just be to do assume cd, and now I just need to uh, show uh, the consequent. Now, I'm not going to bother writing that out because it's actually trivially easy. I have s from line 6. That's s, that is 6, simplify, double negate, and I also have uh, not z over here from line 10, so I can just get s and not z immediately from saying line 13, line 10, uh, a, d, j to a join, and of course that is the conditional derivation because I've shown the consequent, and I can close. Now this is really nice because what I've just done is I've actually shown the antecedent. So this is the antecedent here, and I showed it here, which means I can immediately do a modus ponens. When I get the modus ponens, I'll get not bracket w arrow r, and I got that from line 11, premise 3, modus ponens. And this is nice because here I can immediately negation of conditional this and affirm w and not r. And this is a very handy line. So that is 15 negation of conditional. Okay. Now that I have W and not R, I actually have a lot more sort of atomics to work with, and it's actually pretty easy. This W is the negation of one side over here. I just need to turn it into not not W, and I can MTP, so that's very easy. Um, on line 17, I get to say that I have T. How? I took 16. I simplified the W. I double negated the W, and then I took premise 2, and I MTP'd. Now this is great because now I've used premise 2, I've used premise 1, I have my t. Now it's just sort of a very sort of simple game of uh, trying to sort of figure out what I can do. Uh, so I got my t, uh, well, oh, I realize I made an error over here on my De Morgan's line. That should say negation t, or not, not r. So um, the reason why is because when you De Morgan's, you distribute and then flip the sign, which is what I did here. So now this T will MTP with line 8, and I get not not R. How did I get that? 17. Double negate, and then I take my line 8 and MTP. Finally, I have not not R. Uh, I look around. Well, on line 16, notice that I flag the lines which I think are important, so it's, it's, I'm actually sort of shortcutting when I look for things. I realize I have not R in 16, so that's not R. That is 16 simplify. And of course, this with line 18 is an indirect derivation because those are contradictions. Box and close. So, one thing in interesting about this proof is really uh, that I could have started in one of two ways, and it doesn't really matter. The key thing about this proof, the only tricky step, is right here when I realized that I had to show the uh, antecedent of this premise, and I showed it here. Showing it is actually quite easy. That's not the hard part. The hard part is knowing to show it. How did I know? I was basically stuck. I had a bunch of premises and lines that I couldn't do anything with, so if I have a conditional, the way to get out of the bind is to show the antecedent. I could have also shown the negation of the consequent, which would have just been show w arrow r. That also would have been quite easy. And then the negation here for the mt, I could have done an easy negation of conditional and the proof would have solved. So for an exercise, if you want to try something different, instead on line 11, you could show uh, w arrow r, which is the negation of the consequent of premise 3. 
or you could actually try something different and you can go for the modus to lend opponents. You could have actually shown not t, or you could have shown w. These would have allowed you to MTP premise 2. This one allows you to modus tollens premise 3. There is another option here, I think. It's down here on line 8. You could have also tried to show um, T, or you could have tried to show uh, not R. These would have allowed you to MTP line uh, 8. So, whenever you're stuck, you're basically looking to use one of your rules to access the parts, to break down a line or a premise, and that gives you the guidance for what you want to show. You can show anything, so the temptation is just to sort of go a little crazy and show random things, but you need to think a little ahead. Here I chose to show the antecedent, but I could have shown negation of consequent, I could have gone for this MTP of premise 2, I could have gone for this MTP of line 8. It turns out that the proof will solve no matter what you show, so um, the suggestion is try it a bunch of different ways until you're comfortable with this move. Okay, that's the derivation. Good luck.